This is a HeadGum Podcast. What's up, guys? There are a million things demanding your time. Contact lenses should not be one of them. That's why we, the Doughboys, I'm the only one who's here, but I speak for both of us. We're excited about a great new company called Simple Contacts that is making the process of renewing your prescription and buying contacts, well, simple. That's the name. You can do it from your phone or computer in a matter of minutes. Get a load of this. You don't have to take time off. You don't have to spend hours at the doctor. You don't have to talk to some weird optometrist who's going to lean a little too close to you, ask number one or number two, just to renew your prescription. You can now do it online in under five minutes. This is Vision Care for the 21st century. Here's how it works. Take a quick self-guided vision test from your phone or computer. That's right. You can do it from your phone or computer. Reviewed by a licensed doctor in 24 hours, you receive a renewed prescription and reorder your brand of contacts. It's so, so simple. Again, Simple Contacts, that's the name, that's the brand. If you had an unexpired prescription, you can use that too. Just upload a photo of it or your doctor's info and order your lenses in minutes for a great price. They do all the hard work for you. Buying more contacts has never been easier and why should it be hard in the first place, right? Again, Simple Contacts, that's the whole gimmick here. Simple Contacts offers every brand of lenses. Their prices are unbeatable. The vision test is just $20. Compare that with an annual appointment, which can be up to $200 without insurance. Nobody has insurance these days, right? I mean, everyone's getting screwed. Joe and Jane Paycheck are taking it up the kazoo. Shipping is free. And best of all, our listeners get $20 off their first Simple Contacts order to save $20 on your lenses. Just go to simplecontacts.com slash doughboys or enter the code doughboys at checkout. Again, this is not a replacement for your periodic full health exam. You still need those occasionally, but it is the most convenient way to renew a prescription and reorder your contacts. Check out Simple Contacts and get $20 off by going to simplecontacts.com slash doughboys or just enter code doughboys at checkout. Save yourself time, money, and a headache with, what's that name? Simple Contacts. 1930s architecture saw the emergence of Streamline Modern, a sleek, slimmed-down subset of Art Deco that emphasized the efficiency of the electrical age. After the Second World War, the economic revitalization and growth of car culture in the U.S. saw streamlined modern supplanted by a different forward-looking aesthetic. Googie architecture, characterized by sharp geometry, sloped surfaces, and vibrant colors, and exhibited in fictional futuristic settings like the Jetsons, Futurama, and Disney's Tomorrowland. Throughout the 1950s, the distinct, attention-grabbing exterior design was in common use alongside highways in the suburban U.S., a way to lure passing motorists into motels, movie theaters, and, most commonly, restaurants. In addition to the diner that gave the aesthetic its distinct name, Googie's Coffee Shop in Hollywood, famous examples of the style include the first Bob's Big Boy, the first McDonald's, and the oldest standing example of an L.A. eatery that opened on La Cienega Boulevard in 1957, the same year the Soviet Sputnik satellite launched the space race. Actually the second of the 24-7 diner locations to open, its always available breakfast and value-oriented menu would lead it to multiply and become a beloved L.A. institution depicted in numerous movies and TV shows set in the City of Angels, most recently, Amazon's dadbait police procedural, Bosch. Today, Googie architecture is rare in the real world, though the designated historical site of the diner's oldest location remains a stirring example of the form. Once an aspirational vision of a space-age future, now a time capsule that anchors it in the past, though its corporate motto dismisses the concept of time altogether. We never close. This week on Doughboys, Norms. <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, Raspberry Lime Ricky Gervais, Mitchie Two Spoons, Mike Mitchell. Ah, I remember this one. I didn't have an issue with it. You remember this one? <laughs> From when well, we recorded this before, we've, we've, we've got a tale I mean, to we're tell. About to, we're about to tell the tale. We're about tale. to disclose it. That was courtesy of Todd Taylor. If you have an insult you'd like me to use, mention at the top of the show, roastspoonman at gmail.com Ooh, a is the address. Ooh, of insults he is. Oh, he is. He is quite the tailor of <laughs> barbs. Uh, yes. Phantom th- Thread. Ah, oh, fuck it. I don't even know what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> Nick? More like Phantom Threat. There, thank you. You know, we got a lost episode. We have a lost episode. Doughboys has a lost episode. This, well, now. we have a lost half of an episode. Here's mm-hmm. what happened. We have a little bit of a... You know what, Mitch? Why don't you play your drop, and then we'll get into this. All right. Uh, Had it out to Mitchie Two Spoons Nation. Here's a little new drop. Guess what? Someone's drop was played. I don't know whose it is. 
I might go back through and figure out whose drop was actually played and played again. You're not going to do that. I know it's it's lost. Uh, we'll 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 say something later on where you can maybe figure out if it was your drop. But here we go for now. It was My Baba Juice, Chop Chip is chocolate, Chop Chip is chocolate, chocolate milk. My Baba. It was My Baba Juice, Chop Chip is chocolate. Chop chip is chocolate. Chocolate milk in my bubba. Bubba juice chop chip with milk. Mm-hmm. Bubba juice chop chip with milk. Yeah. A large soda. Ray Liotta. Yeah. Dongle. 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 Mm-hmm. I was a cute little baby. A brand new drop. Very cool. Who was that courtesy of? That was courtesy of, one second, Nick, Jeff Oakley. Hello, El Capitan Two Spoons. Here's another quick drop for you. Nick will love this one because I know how much he loves a parody song. I do. Especially one that can be construed as disrespectful. Or, uh, and I'm not going to read that, or <laughs> of important social and racial commentary. Have a great day. Okay. I that. think you did do this drop before. This might have been the drop you did before on Jordan's because I remember you saying, I'm not going to read the rest of that. No, it, oh, do you know what? But that was something that, no, it was a different thing. He had a different thing that he sent in. That you said, I'm not going to read the rest of. I think this is the one. I think you ax, you stumbled upon the one that you hadn't, that you'd, uh, I, or he's used the same message for something else. This Jeff hmm. Oakley character. All right. Maybe that was it. That could have been it. It's possible. It was it. Unless you use that also on another episode. That is, that, that's also a huge possibility. Which is a possibility. So if you've heard this drop for the second time, Oakley, congratulations you're a two-time dropper same drop first time this has ever happened not true that's probably <laughs> happened before as well uh yeah i would i would say that the the bubba juice chop set the chop chip thing is more culturally important when you nick yeah i think so <laughs> uh, oh right it's the, the this, this is america yes oh this is america yeah. wait hold on and i think when you, we did we had this and discussion I think you, before. and i think you didn't understand what song it i was. didn't recognize it because i hadn't heard the song yeah but so wait so did we have this discussion on this episode or was this another Who episode knows? it might be another episode we don't know hold on what were the other ones we did no let's not try to figure this out i want to figure this out because we either can, the, either we just luckily played the one from jordan's episode or people will laugh at us and it's from another episode okay wait Oh, no, I think robot. no, I think this is it because I think we have yeah, I think we I think this is the exact same drop we did on a previous episode. Well, hell, we, we yeah, did a, we did we on this same episode. I, I guess I, what? Said I read episodes. the rest of that email episode. even though I shouldn't have read it, but there you go. <laughs> you did the same thing. I remember this exact same sort of action. Also this this may have this exact interaction may have happened on the another episode that came out, but I think this was the last episode. Let's explain what, what happened. What a, what a weird thing to also then just like repeat the same thing we did. Very strange. Very we're, strange. I'm a little robot too. It we're both out. we're both a little robot men. No, you're more robot. <laughs> well, you're more of a man. Size-wise. <laughs> <laughs> so let's explain what happened. No, not an insult at first. We had our good friend. Yeah, I had to make it into one. <laughs> so let's explain what happened. I'm going to pass the ox cord over to our engineer, Emma, here. Sorry, let me, let me take that again. That's what that horrible noise That's what that was. horrible noise was. You're and hearing... You continue to hear. I feel like she'll, she'll be able to fix that in post. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> not now that you talked about it. Okay. <laughs> That's our fault. That's my fault. Uh, it's Mitch's fault. Um, so... <laughs> what? So... So we recorded this episode, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it's the first half was lost, was a garbled mess. Uh, the this second ne- half this has never happened. This has never happened in the history of oh, Dope Boys. Not fair. Emma, you can you can you can get on the mic there, too, if you'd like. There's oh, it's not on. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, you know what? We can just we can we can have you talk. Yeah, here. you can talk into Mitch. There's been there's been there's been moments where episodes have been corrupted yes and you you because you're an expert you've you fixed you fixed it but this is the first time one has been fully lost well yeah there was a live episode that got corrupted before i was even your engineer oh yeah that i managed to fix somehow but this one got this one is beyond repair (laughs) play play a little bit of it and this this is we had our good buddy jordan morrison in the first half of our discussion with jordan who's who's one of the funniest men we should really hit home that i he has this great show bubble that he wrote that you are on that I that I'm on that's and and you'll hear us talk about it in the second half of this episode we do, we do talk which about is it. intense right, so you'll hear a little and bit I, about I do that. a little voice on there it's a great he did a great job and that so he was here promoting that show yeah his it's his new narrative sci-fi comedy you can find it on the Max Fun uh, podcast network mm-hmm. it's called Bubble check it out um, but yeah em- Emma so this uh, this got totally corrupted and can can you play a little bit of this this garbled mess of the episode what this actually sounds like. <laughs> 
Yeah, so it's corrupted in two different ways. So it starts like this alien mess. Yeah, I won't let that go Jesus too long. Christ, it's, unsettling. Really, it's really uncomfortable. I just want to say Nick jumped in his chair. You fucking loser. My my headphones are turned up more than you, and I didn't react. I just, I just, uh, that was like uh, the my Manchurian candidate call to action. I have a mission now. If it makes you feel better, I jumped the first time I heard it. I've just heard it a thousand times and tried to fix it. So I'm very, I'm very comfortable with what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, then later it gets kind of trippy. It just kind of sounds like this delayed mess. We told back, 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 back. Told you. <laughs> John, why? <laughs> you told you. He's do a, a little dark, <laughs> kind of dark side ish right told- now. A nightmare. A little dark side ish. A little, a little. Uh, what, what's that? Uh, what's that Yoko Ono song? The collaboration. Number with nine. Yeah, a little number nine ish. Um, I, I, I think it sounds cool. It does sound all. cool. I mean, it sounds cooler than our normal episode. Nick, I'm turning on the AC. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're going to release this to Patreon. <laughs> we'll release this corrupted first half to our Patreon listeners. If you remember the Golden Plate Club, you can have this whole thing, whatever you want to do with it. What, if you want to listen to it, you. try to figure out what we say. I'm going to say this about the, the first half of the episode. I think almost a godsend. You thought it was bad? You were... I, I accused you of being in a bad mood. We had a... We got... We, there, was a, there was some bad blood between us. There the was, we, were, we were upset with each other. I think the only time we Jordan's, ever got in a fight on the podcast was the first <laughs> half of this episode. Jordan said he's here for one of the fighty episodes. Yeah. It was not fun fighty. Yeah. You accused me of not liking Spider-Man Homecoming. Which I then had to defend myself to, and then mm-hmm. I finally broke and said I don't like it, and fuck all the listeners. And I think you said Suicide Squad is better. No, I did not say okay. Suicide Squad was better. I said that I just didn't like, and and so the, we we were just very, but it was because of show. It was just, you had just started your new job, yes, and. Towards the end, we let out the cats to kind of diffuse the, the situation. Things calmed down once the cats came to out. To let play. Wally and Irma come out. So the second right. half is way less testy. Yeah. And so for for you Patreon, uh, you Patreon subscribers, you can listen to this jarbled mess. See if you can hear anything in there. But it was I was actually happy that it didn't it, that it kind of got deleted. Don't start pointing yeah. the finger at me now, Nick. No, I don't. I, but, I, I don't think it's your. It's not your fault. Like it's no one's fault. Yes, I, it's one person's fault. We're not going to say who it is, but his name rhymes with you song. <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, the uh, uh, that's not true. You song had nothing to do with this. It but rhymes it, with Boodong. Yeah, <laughs> but but it's you are, song. but you song is still fired. Yeah. Um, but the uh, but yeah, we we calm down quite a bit. The second half is, is a why little bit smoother. Why would you say it rhymes? Why don't, why wouldn't you try something that rhymes with you song? That was the joke I was making. That it rhymes with his. A, you, there's not even any calculation that you have to make. <laughs> Just whatever. Never. I mind. guess that's a Simpsons joke. Yeah, yeah. you know it's good. I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, uh, so so yeah, we, we the first half with with Jordan Morris was lost. Unfortunately, the second half is still intact. And hey, you know that how this mm-hmm. podcast works. If you're a longtime listener, the first half is just us dicking around. Anyway, mm-hmm. we get down to business in the second half. So our review of this week's restaurant, Norms, was entirely in the second half. Anyway, we, you didn't lose any of that. We have all, all of this the the, the full Norms so review is there. All that fun banter gone. All the fun banter is gone. All that dry uh, recitation of the meal that we had and mm-hmm. uh, uh, rating everything by 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 number of utensils. That's all there. Uh, the segment is still there. The feedback is still there. Um, and there's something else that we wanted to, to insert in here um, because in the interim, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put the aux cord in real quick. In, in the interim, uh, we received a voicemail from a good friend of ours. That's right. And we figured we could play it right now uh, for you guys. Here we go. Uh, hey, two spoons. Hey, double reads. It's John Hodgson calling. Uh, I'm in a car again, and uh, I just uh, I was listening to you as I've been driving from uh, Maine all the way to New Hampshire uh, to promote the paperback of my book, Vacation Land, that just came out. That's a plug. I really enjoyed the Matt Meyer episode. Uh, you brought up Bickford's, and it reminded me I have never, ever been to a Bickford's. There are still a couple of them in Massachusetts. Uh, but I heard the jingle on the radio five times a day, every day of my young life. And this is how it went. Sick birds cooking good things to eat. <laughs> Early morning breakfast or late night treats. Anytime you're feeling hungry, there's something good cooking at Big Birds Country. Boy, I hope I got that in under the wire. This is very embarrassing. John Hodgman, 
couch could buy. Vacation land paperback available now could buy. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that song is real. I think that's something he dreamed. Uh, I love Bickford's. That was like my diner of choice. I think yeah. we get into that maybe in the second half of the episode about Bickford's. We might talk about it a little bit because we do talk there, about there diners. Was, there was there was there was a uh, I think my mom worked at Bickford's. I, that's where I used to go when I was in high school, like the late night diner place. Oh, fun! But I never had heard that song. Yeah, <laughs> the song that think, he sang. If you've heard that song, uh, hashtag. I also heard that song. <laughs> oh, cool <laughs> hashtag. Um. Uh, and hashtag, at this point, hashtag Hodgman isn't crazy. How about that? Hashtag I, Hodgman is. Sane. I said, uh, "What a great guy he is for sending that in." This is what I said after we played that. Yes, God bless him. And I said, "A great guy. I like that he makes fun of you, calls you double read." Mm-hmm. And then you, then you, you gave you gave Hodgman some shit. I didn't give him any shit. Yeah, you did. No, you're inventing this now no, because you're, we're recreating this, and now you're trying to make me look bad. Do uh-huh. John Hodgman, a man I respect ten times as much as I respect you. <laughs> oh, well, that's still not saying much. Yeah, I guess ten, anything times zero is <laughs> zero. We got, we got into a Hodgman fight. We got into a fight about it. There was no Hodgman fight. This is invented. This is a fabrication. <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble with Hodgman. He's trying to promote his new book, Vacation Land. Uh, his book now, now in paperback. His book yeah. has been out for some time. He's trying to promote that. That's all, you, that's all you said. You're try, I know, but you're trying to insert <laughs> this... this Beef and I said, well, maybe he's not just trying to promote his book. Maybe he's trying to call us up and talk to us. That's what I said. This is you're inventing this. Uh, hey, none of this took it's place in the jarbled audio. And also, John, if you're listening, I'm I'm on your side. Nick is a piece of shit. <laughs> we should team up together. <laughs> So you went on and on about how this this started out like the the, the last episode was hostile. It was very and now hostile. you're trying your best to make this makeup little like sectional that we're inserting to try to to, to, to cover for it. You're trying to make this also no as all the stuff that was bad for me is kind of gone because <laughs> it was you, you, it was your first day of work. You were a little crank. You were cranky. Yeah, it was a little cranky. So you're what? Cranky. I wish I, I want the audio to come out so people can see how cranky you were. Well, you'll release. People aren't going to be able to tell anything because it sounds like nothing. Yeah, it's it's indecipherable. Well, we're going we're we're to release it. Yeah, we've said that a bunch of times. We're going to release it to Patreon listeners. You're being now. You're being hostile. <laughs> I don't know what you're what you're trying to accomplish here. I thought that I was going to pass a kidney stone today before we started recording. Oh, this is news to me. I haven't heard this before. I didn't tell you this. Yeah, and I soldiered through. Wait, really? Just before recording? Yes, I was. So we very went nervous. out and we ate something mm-hmm. for a, for a future episode. Uh, uh-huh. And you had you thought you had got a kidney stone after that meal. When I came back here, I went I, I went into the bathroom and I was very nervous that I was passing a kidney stone. Oh wow! Because mm-hmm. well, like, what does that feel like? You just feel oh, it's like terrible. Your I never told you about this. No, I know you've passed kidney stones yeah, yeah. before. You told me I, multiple I, we kidney went stone to, went to Coachella. Yeah, with Harris and Armin, and Harris threw out his back, and I passed a kidney stone, which was like the most pathetic thing of of like i was right. in like the back seat of the car being like oh and then like they would i'd be like don't talk to me i couldn't have anyone talk to me yeah also there was a time at a birthday boys party yes when they had that house you've told me this before yeah have i did i say this on the air you i mean you've told me about yeah you you've got you had a kidney stone issue with it where there's a bunch of people there there was a bunch of people there i went into the bathroom and i told jeff to watch the door yeah and i basically masturbated in the bathroom at the party <laughs> How does that help the kidney stone situation? It, it, it really, it really, it really. I swear to God, I'm not a f- creep, obviously. Uh-huh. But uh, but well, <laughs> maybe lose the obviously. But, but I was right. like, Jeff, you got to watch this door. Like, I'm going to go in there, and I, I have to. Like, I, this is. I'm passing a kidney stone. I think. Uh-huh. And I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I, I like. I passed it. I didn't think you were having a. I didn't. A, I didn't masturbate to. I didn't do. I didn't finish it. But I thought that I was going to have to. Because it helps me. It did. It, do, it does. It weirdly helped. It, it has helped before. I swear to God, I'm not. I'm not just lying. This is disgusting. I'm tell. This is a. This is a. This is a medical thing, Nick. So you like like a volcano? You like shoot a magma <laughs> rock out with a, a gush of ejaculate? <laughs> That's dis- that is disgusting. That's what you're suggesting. So before the show, I thought that I was, but I think that I think I've I think I'm in the clear, but I'm nervous about it now. But what does it feel like? Is it, it feels like, a, like fucking hell. But but like specifically, it feels like what you just said. It feels like something is in your dick. Y- yeah. Wow. Yeah, so like like yes. it, it's not like an abdomen. It feels like it's in the the dick part. It, it, I mean, like you you don't feel good. All it feels like you have to pee constantly. Oh, okay. Which is like which you don't know is like torturous. Right. But yeah, I think I think I'm I think I'm in the clear. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So in your case, it's like 
you're trying to fit with your with the size of your dick. <laughs> It's like you're trying to squeeze a marble out of a single grain of rice. <laughs> Emma's laughing at me. Everyone's laughing at me. <laughs> no one's laughing at you. We're having fun. I feel sorry for you. It was it was it was it was it was it was horrible. I thought that was going to happen tonight. Mitch, so I, I thought it was going to be too uh, you know, too Cursed episode, right? I know. Well, I hope your health is okay. I hope yeah, you're feeling I'm doing better. Pretty good, like good. recently. I'm good. trying. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, yeah. I, I hope this this kidney stone thing is a false alarm. I hope you get through it. Mm-hmm. I hope if you do have to jack off, Dutton will come over and guard the door for you again. <laughs> oh. Wally and Irma might try to sneak in yeah. there. <laughs> it was very, it was very, a very strange sensation for me. Obviously, nothing right. that I've ever done ever. Yes, like a wild party with like tons of a ton of people yeah that's crazy was and, i there i mean I, I definitely wasn't there but it's weird i i i i came up and knocked on the door and you were just finishing jacking <laughs> off. <laughs> uh mitch here's what we're gonna do we're uh, going to we're gonna take a break uh and we're gonna come right back the we, cats are gonna be let out the cats are gonna be let out when you come back you're going to hear the second half of our episode with our great guest mm-hmm. uh jordan morris uh promise you it all makes sense Check out Bubble, buy Vacation Land in, in, in paperback, and we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with the second half of this week's Doughboys. See you then. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Jordan Morris. The cats have come out to play. The cats have been unleashed. Meow, meow, they're saying. <laughs> and they're little cat mics. <laughs> as they record Doe Cats, <laughs> a oh, podcast about mind. kibble. Yeah. Irma. Irma. Nope. No response. Okay. She stretched. She right- looked around. She stretched. She came over. Oh, Wally. She has a very now, sweet too. face. And then Wally's sniffing Rob. Yeah. Wally's a handsome boy. Mm-hmm. Very sleek. Your cats good seem boy. like they're a good weight, Mitch. They're like a good. They seem. They seem like they're. They're. Uh, yeah. They seem healthy. Yeah. They're healthy. I, I love them. I take care of them. And Here's, I will say, as a cat owner myself, mm-hmm. uh, I also uh, I have a hard time sometimes controlling litter odor in the house. Mm-hmm. This place smells great. Thank you very you much. You have a couple different scented good. candles going. Uh, uh-huh. Nice, some nice scents, some nice uh, not overpowering scents. Way to go! I, I you know, I, I, I get the a bo- I, I do the the tops to the litter boxes, and and that usually helps out. But you know what? I I, I get I, I get I get I get to change that litter out. Speaking of which, that's always a pain. That's the right. biggest sure. pain in the ass. Yeah, scooping. It's the biggest pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. got to yeah. change your cat's box. Probably your own too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a giant litter box. Mm. You, know, uh, you don't believe me? I don't know if you can work that flush handle, <laughs> Mitch. I, I, I'm a listener to the show, and I don't know if I have heard you talk about this. Forgive me mm-hmm. if this is trod territory, mm-hmm. but do you do voices for your cats while you're talking to them? And what do the voices sound like? Oh man, this is embarrassing. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Sorry, this is a little bit of a pimp. Oh, should I? Can I do my cat's uh, voice for I you? Would I'd love, love to yeah. hear yours. Uh, I have a cat. Her name is Bug, and she talks like this. This is her voice. <laughs> time to sleep. <laughs> she mostly says "time to sleep." Anyway, I, I, I will. She's I'll, like a little. Uh, she's like a little college professor. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Are you turning your term papers? More embarrassingly, I'll just be like. I, w- I earn my baby. Like, I'll say that sure. to them. That's adorable. And I'll say, hey, Wall- Wally, buddy, what are you doing? I'll say stuff like that. Today, today before I left to come here, I uh, told my cat, uh, I love how soft you are. <laughs> 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 I worry I worry that I've, the, in, the, in, in this time, this time in my life where I've, I've lived a while alone with a cat, I yeah. feel as though maybe I'm insane and just don't know it. Right. Yeah. Like, if someone else saw my behavior, they would be like, Ooh, why are you acting like that? You know, I anyway. think you can. They're great. Can Wally's now that. on the table, yeah. right? Wally's great. Wally is—is is he leaving the table? No, he's just perched on the edge. He doesn't really want to be up here. That's okay, sure. he's getting off the table. Uh, well, hey, you know, we got—we should we got to discuss this week's chain. Norms, famed for hangover food and for late night eats, it's a classic diner. We went to the mm-hmm. La Cienega location as a party, um, and this is the longest surviving Norms in L.A. It's largely centered in LA. There's a few. In fact, they might all be in the city, but they're 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 at. I think the, if they're outside of the city limits of LA, the furthest they are they are out is still within LA County. It's a pretty conf- area confined chain. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, uh, Jordan, why did you want to discuss norms? Uh, well, yeah, I guess uh, I, I guess it. 
whenever I drive by norms, mm. uh, I have a pretty powerful sense memory. It really, uh, it to me, is you know represents like my early time in LA. Got it. Pretty hard because, um, yeah, and and yeah, and so I, I think I think this this review for me kind of like you know brings up the 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 doughboy's dilemma mm-hmm. of are you reviewing this trip to the restaurant or are you reviewing your feelings about this restaurant right sometimes they can be intertwined it can be you, it's, you, yeah. we're okay with that it's the nature nurture of doughboys mm-hmm. um and yeah i really like i really associate it with my early time in la because um you know, I think my first couple jobs were PA jobs, which I think you, both of you guys have done, oh, yeah. or you've done some version of it. And uh, at least the one I had was, you know, you get in early and you leave late, and you could always count on that norms to be open. Sure, mm, like yeah. you could always get a breakfast there. You could always get a, you know, you could always get some late night when everything else is closed. Right, mm-hmm. uh, reasonable prices. And I, yeah, I just I, and also in addition to that, in addition to that kind of utilitarian, this is, this is open when I need food. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also just, I God, I, I sobered up there so much. I did right, so yeah. much sobering up there. And it really like represents a kind of a fun time to me when I was sobering up a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but also I kind of, when I look back on that time now at, at 36, when I look back on those early 20s, there is a little bit of regret, like a, oh, maybe you went to norms so much because you were drinking too much because maybe you were dealing with demons in an improper yeah. way. Oh, interesting. So I also feel a little bit sad when I drive mm. by them because, Ooh. yeah, it's like, oh, you know, you maybe you were getting drunk and going to norms when you should have been exercising and going to therapy. Right. And, uh, That's an interesting thing that can, I think that can happen with food and music and different things that you dealt with stuff that were maybe demons in some way. Mm. And right. Some outlet that you had. And yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. Mitch, yeah. I'm proud of you for understanding context there and not getting spooked at the word demons. <laughs> Even saying it yourself. <laughs> sure. I mean, you, you did get, you did put the crucifix on yourself after you said it. <laughs> you smeared some ash on his forehead. <laughs> Why well, are you really coming at me this episode? You called me cranky. I was I was right. I think that's unre- unreasonable. I called. I said you were going to be cranky even before you got here, and we I was all thought right. Justice League was pretty good. <laughs> the kid who played the Flash had a lot of charm. The mother box heist is a great action scene. I I, I, I thought Justice League got torn up, but look, I'm not going to get into that because people are going to think that's bad and think my movie taste is even worse. Yes, give Justice League a shot, everybody. Uh, not that bad. You started a new job, Nick. I did. I started a new job. I you're, got a lot going working. on. You're working. You're a I've working had, man. We had a... So the chronology of this will we'll outline. Mm-hmm. We we just were in San Francisco. Yes. We spent a weekend there. That's a, that's another reason why I said you're going to be cranking. I'm tired, too. I get it. I got I got back. I got about four hours of sleep. I, I yeah. got up. I went... Because we got our flight got back after midnight. Yeah. Um, then on, the, the Clone Wars. Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're talking the chronology. <laughs> right, right. And then Solo? Uh, yeah. Solo's after the Clone Wars. And then... And now and now we're taping the right podcast. yeah yeah um <laughs> maul makes an appearance and you're a little like like wait what i thought he died but sure. if you uh, watch the cartoons Ooh, you know it's canon that he's he's in it um anyway so uh uh we can edit that out um now nah, yeah darth maul's at the end of solo, darth maul's in solo. <laughs> yeah. if you haven't seen it by this point uh so uh <laughs> so <laughs> did you like as a prequels fan did you like when darth maul showed up mitch I liked that he was there, but it's also just kind of that sort of thing of like he wasn't used well. Would you prefer it have been Dexter Jetster? <laughs> I, 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 if, if Dexter Jetster was there in a, in a hologram, that would have been funny. Like very maybe funny. it's Darth Maul saying like, you know, doing whatever kind of cryptic thing he was doing. And then he was you know, or- Dexter Jetster is like, Astro eggs are up. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Maul's like, coming. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. My shift manager's a bitch. <laughs> you have a job? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, so yeah, we went to the, wait, where was I going with this? I was saying something a second ago. Oh, the chronology of this. Yeah. yeah. So, so San Francisco, um, mm-hmm. I got in, I got about four hours of sleep, woke up, went to the gym, uh, wow. show, showered, went straight to work, was super tired. Um, I got a good amount of sleep last night, but mm-hmm. I also got up early. I also worked a full day, came straight here, or actually I made a stop at Seven Eleven to pick up some stuff for another episode, came straight, then came here. Hold on a second. Yeah. You're saying that like I didn't go to the supermarket and you went to the supermarket. You asked me to pick something else up from Seven Eleven. That's you putting something onto this. I didn't. I didn't say that. I like because you're Mitch smiling. Didn't want to go. You, though you smiled at one night when you said when you said it. You're reading way too much into that. But in between you showering and going to Seven Eleven, that's Ant Man and the Wasp, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, it's a little confusing. It happens. So, and so I bought about eighty dollars worth of sodas for, for. Well, I can't spoil it. What's going to happen, right? <laughs> it might be out before this. I don't know the chronology of how these podcasts are releasing. Is its own thing. <laughs> yeah, it's its own, yes, it's yeah. crazy. Uh, so, uh, but we went to the. But anyway, so I'm I'm a little tired. Sure. Mm-hmm. That said, I'm fine. And uh, you know, you were talking you about great. Nonsense. You look fresh. Oh, God bless you. Have you. A, you have a, a fresh enthusiasm about you i hope that comes about in the in the photo we take mm-hmm. we'll see we'll find out later uh so we went to the the norms and, and you met, we were talking about it's ours and i i just wanted to talk on its its slogan real quick because they really really lean on that they're not open 24 hours they just say we never close yeah which i like i like that's like like oh you mean there's there's no exception for any holiday uh at 24 hours seven days a week yeah. every Wanna day be of the year bummed out on thanksgiving yeah <laughs> <laughs> come here around six i've you know natalie and i have actually been to norms maybe not on thanksgiving perhaps on christmas we've been on a, a major holiday when they kind of because we're just like you know what? we're hungry let's just go we know it's open and it was actually a delight they were super friendly and, and the service was great and it was all it's all like diner comfort food there sure. so it was nice to have on a holiday uh, when we had, I think, maybe a family thing earlier in the day and they had nothing to do for dinner. Um, but so we went to the La Cienega location. Our server, Rodolfo, I think was his name. I believe that was what it was on mm. the receipt anyway, was fantastic. I thought he gave us really, really good service. Great. Very attentive. Um, fixed a, a mishap we had with our meal, which we'll get to in a bit. And I, I thought it was just like pleasant mm. and jokey and and just like just like a, a, a perfect, uh, perfect yeah, service. Yeah, recommended some stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. I always, that's always my feeling about norms is yeah. that you are you're not you're not getting that kind of typical cranky diner wait staff. Right. It seems like they go out of their way to hire friendly, vivacious people. They're very who, nice. If you want to make a substitution, they'll be like, "Yeah, no problem." You know, yeah. they, there's, they're not going to like freak out over anything. I'd never been to Norms. Yeah, wow. I was. Yeah. I was surprised. I was really surprised. Yeah, I, and I like late night diner places. I love Bigfords. It's funny that Hodgman. We play that for this episode because right. I think it goes hands in hand, hand in hand with Norms a little bit. He's going to call back with some Norm song from like the seventies. <laughs> They're like, "What was that real?" Um, I so I was looking forward to. It. I I want to really like Norms. I never understood. I saw Norms. And I was like, "What is Norms? Is this like a reference to Cheers?" Truly, that when I oh, first sure. moved here, yeah, I was, was like, right. a, "A Cheers pop up restaurant." A, yeah, yeah. I, I I didn't because there's the one it's that right I, across from Carolyn in the cities. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's right across. I think it is right across the street from strip. It's across the street from a strip club. Yeah, it is. It has a. It, it yeah. It is across from the strip club that does have the like stereotypical flashing sign that says "girls, girls, girls." Yes, right? Yeah. So it is very like. You're like, ooh, I'm in a seedy part of town. Yeah, the strip club, uh, and then like, you're not. There's a lot of rug stores around there too. But right. and, and it's it's right near to put to to get. It's it's right near where uh, what's the the famous comedy. Uh, the improv, the the performance space, the there. Largo, the Largo, yeah, yeah. The it's Largo. right, it's right near Lar- Largo, or the or the Largo, where Largo is now. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, I I oh I'd always seen this norms. I don't I like I've been always this is the norms that I like recognize the most. Is yeah, this, it's distinct is this, googie architecture and its mm-hmm. famous sign. Yeah, and uh, and and but I never I never had it, and I love Bickfords. I, I and I. I I like IHOP, but like uh, or hey, breaking choose IHOP. I think this is some prank. Yeah, I think, you they're, think, gonna, I think they're not actually going to commit. It's going to gonna be some sort of bacon promo. Yeah, I mean, this will probably be resolved by the time this episode is out. Again, mm. you know, we're we're the chronology of this is just it's so hard to keep your mind around. Um, but the, and it's weird that like kind of everybody's doing it. I feel like isn't Jack in the Box becoming Jack in the Borks? <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> confusing, right? Anyway. Taco, Taco Bell is becoming Taco Beal. They're changing <laughs> one of the L's to an right. uppercase. And I. Jessica Beal will work there for yeah. a couple yeah. hours, and then it's to promote something. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, you're probably right. But uh, but I, I anyways, I have a fondness for places like this. Yes, and for sober up spots. Right and for late night. Dining places that you go into in high school and college or whatever. I, I, I yeah. like places like that. So I think my first trip to a Norms was probably I really associate it with L.A. But also I I did go to a Norms in high school a little bit because I grew up in Orange County. Uh, and one of our spots we would drive up one of the all ages venues where we would go to see punk rock shows was a place called Coos Art Cafe. And uh, because I was uh, I was not a, a drinker or a drug doer in high school, I was a uh, a goody two shoes who was a little mm. bit religious. I, we would like our if we wanted to stay out late, 
we were like seeing a band or we were goofing off at a diner. Got like, it. Those were our like, right. we we're really cutting loose. Yeah. So anyway, we would go to see shows at this Coos Cafe and, we, and then we would go to this Norms that was by it. That anyway. surprised me, Jordan. I didn't, I didn't know that the little tidbit there of uh, that you were religious. Or, yeah, I yeah. kind of grew up in, in, in uh, and I don't, I, got, I, I don't know if, the, if either of you can relate to this, but like definitely in when I was growing up, Orange County was a hotbed of the hip youth group. Sure. Mm. Where like a, you know, a cool youth pastor with tattoo sleeves would like, I absolutely play remember a, this play scene, a yeah. U two song on his guitar and yeah. say, you know, you know, not this not all love songs are about girls, you know, right? Oh stuff like that. man, yeah, a lot of a lot sometimes of... they're about boys, and then he would kiss us. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I we used to go to this uh, this venue, and it was it was a church, and they had free punk shows sure. on like Friday nights, and the idea was there'd be a punk show, and then uh, you know partway through their set a like youth pastor would come out and talk to the kids about how cool Jesus is. And then they'd go, the band would play like so, uh, some more. And it was like a very strange experience, but it was like very much like in that age of like, like there would be bad kids at this thing. Cause they just wanted to see punk, but there would right, also be sure. like, mm. like, you know, Christian youth there. Yeah. And um, then some of them, you know, and some of those bands would do kind of a, a modestly good job of kind of like covering up the religiousness, right. you know? Yeah. But there would also be ones that were like, they're, like sometimes you'd see a band and then they would just like 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 what's up guys we're a Christian band we're gonna open with a prayer yeah and you just be like oh f- this is gonna suck like these <laughs> guys are are not gonna be good sure um but mm-hmm. yeah it, it, it it's it's they're weird. all wearing hard sole shoes yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I know that they're, they're wearing they're, golf shirts yeah <laughs> <laughs> this the the I know the religiosity is an element of of you know some straight edge culture I think to some degree I think there's some of those are some of them are Christian yeah I think that's they're intertwined for right sure. uh, but and, you know, there's some 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 decent straight edge hardcore. Look, I don't, I'm not some expert on the hardcore scene, but I remember at the sure. time we were disappointed. You love Fugazi, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time we were Fugazi disappointed head. when the punk show was not as uh, was not as uh, it, they were not Hellions when they were they were good sure. Christian boys. But yeah, it, it, it is it is interesting that, that strain exists in Southern California. Um, um, a, a, a different for we just had all the you know in Massachusetts area we just had all the priests. Yeah, and right. Th- they would chase us around to Benny Hill music, <laughs> <laughs> in and out of right. the church. Right. Sure. Uh, so we, so we, uh, so this but is. But you, you would put on a gorilla suit and scare them. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we put on a, a two of us would put on a priest costume and stand right. on the other shoulders. And <laughs> sure. They'd get down and pray. It was it was it was Mitch, fun. Do you still see that busty nurse <laughs> you grew up with? Anyway, she should have helped. She should have helped us out. She should have. When yeah, we were running hindsight, from room to room. Yeah, <laughs> my late grandfather on my dad's dad like loved Benny Hill. Mm. Thought it was oh. just like a very a very entertaining and very funny. I thought you were gonna go. Um, um, my dad's dad, my late grandfather, very busty. <laughs> very, I mean, natural too, right? <laughs> um, That's gross. Uh, so, we, <laughs> so this is an sorry. Old, I was what you talking think? about an old man with big tits? <laughs> no, that was great. Grandpa, All right. grandpa tits aren't gross. They're nice. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All grandpas got get them at some point. Listen, it's part of the aging process. Bears are dogs. <laughs> Old men have nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> These are all facts. So this is an old haunt of yours, Jordan. Yes. This uh, and this is a place that I've been to. Uh, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> You're doing better earlier. Uh, this is a place I've been to uh, quite a bit. I, I, you know, I've been here. I've been to Norms dozens of times to different Norms uh, throughout the city, and I, I always enjoy it. Um, but it had been a while between visits because it is, you know, there, there's not like I try to eat healthier in general outside of this podcast and outside of a few indulgences. And Norms does not really have much in the way of healthy, healthful options. Like sure. stuff is very, very heavy. It's it's what you might expect. It, you know, it's it's about it's about as easy as uh, to eat healthy at a Denny's, which is not easy at all. Um, but they have really good, just classic diner coffee. Uh, mm-hmm. I got myself a cup of coffee, and then we started off with the. And we we can hear you guys' beverages as well. Uh, but we got the iced chef's, tea. Uh, we got an iced <laughs> tea from Jordan. How was that iced tea? Real nice. Yeah, <laughs> just very, a classic straight very iced refreshing. Tea. And Mitch, you got a little bit of a of a, a lime a lime lemonade that had uh uh like a jalapeno. It had had like a. a like a spicy pepper in it, right? This was like an intro. Like it, this was a newer oh, it was menu ha- item. Hab- hab- it was a habanero, right? Habanero lime. I don't think it was habanero. No. Yeah. Mm. I think it was. I think it was oh, a jalapeno, look. but I'm not sure. I don't. I know have it in was. my uh, notes. <laughs> 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 You're looking at Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> He's still watching clips from Spider-Man too. <laughs> 
Um, I, will, I will find that song. So, yeah. so, uh, but yeah, it, it was it like a little citrus to a little citrus to it, a little bite to it. Did you like that, Mitch? I did. Yeah, I enjoyed the lemonade. It was refreshing. Good. It, I was worried about it being too spicy. Right. And uh, the uh, the the waiter said, uh, "Don't you worry." It's he not, reassured you. He yeah. reassured mm-hmm. me that it would be fine. Yeah, right. I enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we got the chef sampler platter, which mm-hmm. is this is a bunch of different apps: fried shrimp, honey mustard chicken tenders, mozzarella cheese sticks, and onion rings served with three different sauces. The sauces, I believe, were a marinara, a cocktail sauce, and a honey mustard. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really glad one of those sauces wasn't ketchup. Yeah, Doesn't I know that fucking suck oh, when they're boy. like, you're getting dips, you're getting a trio of dips mm, or right. a quartet of dips, and just one is fucking ketchup. Don't give me ketchup. It should be on the table. At minimum, have it be like ranch, sure. which I know ranch is conventional. And not a, there's not a it's a fine twist on it, but sauce. it's fine. It's nice to have mm-hmm. there if you're doing a lot of dipping. Exactly. Um, I thought the honey mustard was a good honey. Like if we're talking about the sauces, good honey mustard, very solid uh, 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 cocktail sauce, very solid uh, marinara. I mean, they're just across the board, just very much got the job done. No we're, 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 I mean, we're running into the big thing with sure, the, our yeah. entire yes. meal. Right so off the here's bat the here. issue. But I, by the way, uh, Mr. Gaslighter, habanero lime. It was habanero. Wow, it line. was habanero. Yes. Wow. You fucked up the title of my podcast. You <laughs> fucked up the drink. Look, I mean, I'm, I got Look, a lot going on. You're a cranky dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write sure. down. I'm sorry I didn't write down what you ordered. Oh, wow. Good for you. <laughs> cranky dipshit. <laughs> Fuck off. Look, I love yes. you, Nick. Let's keep going. All right. I do. I love you. We got fried shrimp. <laughs> It shows. I'd say the shrimp across. The shrimp was good. The mozzarella cheese sticks were very good. The yeah, the mozzarella rings sticks were good. Were fine. Mm-hmm. The tenders. Yeah. Do you, you want to? Do you want to drop this bomb, Mitch? Because you know, because you. Did. This is. Yeah. It happened. To, it did happen to me. Yeah. I was the unfortunate one. I bit into a chicken tender, and I immediately noticed as I bit it because it was still like. It was st- like one of those situations where I bit into it and I was like, "Oh, it's like the the outside of it is kind of hot. I'm not gonna right. like chew it." I think I took like a bite or two, but I looked. It was in my hand, and I was like, that looks like maybe it isn't cooked all the way through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it w- what do you guys think? It wasn't. It was it, yeah, raw. We had a, we had an, uh, we had an undercooked tender. Mm. Yeah, it was definitely it was raw. Pulled inside. out of the fryer a little too early. Yeah. And, and Mitch, shame. it's shame. already dangerous for you to eat chicken tenders because you can always make the mistake of biting your own thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you sick motherfucker. But uh, but the uh, but yeah it was it was uh, inedible we were we were right not to eat it we uh, Jordan you spoke up and told Rodolfo about it and he was very apologetic and and promised to fix difficult for me mm. I'm not a big send it back guy I'm not either I will eat undercooked food yeah. <laughs> I will just so I don't make a make a stink but he, yeah. he 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 came over to me and said your friend Nick ordered this uh, rare <laughs> <laughs> do you like rare tenders Wiger. <laughs> I like to be able to taste he that slipped, chicken he flesh. He slipped Rodolfo 100 and say, yeah. see that Mitch doesn't leave the restaurant alive. <laughs> <laughs> I think just you just like your chicken uh, the rare or medium rare. I think that's how you like it. <laughs> no, I like it. I like a well-cooked, through-cooked chicken. Although mm-hmm. I've learned that you you know you can have duck like medium rare, which is mm. interesting. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, and, quack, uh, quack. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> duck. Yeah, that's the noise a duck makes. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. So, so you adri- everyone else liked it except for you. I loved it. Rob, Rob's still convulsing with laughter. I don't know. All right. So, so, uh, Rodolfo addressed it, and he brought us a new batch of honey mustard. Chi- uh, I don't know why I keep saying honey mustard. Well, you know, I think they it, it came with my honey mustard sauce. Yeah, yeah I think out. they don't. They like house make it. Don't they take some sort of pride in their honey mustard? Oh, that it? must be it. Anyway, yeah. so I think anytime you get a chicken dish that comes with that dish, they say it's honey mustard. They put blank, that prefix there. I think they're, yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I think it is their in and out secret sauce. Right. We we uh we had surprise visitors. We had surprise visitors. Joe. Um, Maddie Smith. And Max Mayer, mm-hmm. we didn't know they were joining. They ambushed us. You you looked cu- you looked caught off. I guard. was caught off guard. You did not look happy. Two friends. I didn't know we we're, were going to meet us there. I wasn't. I, why was I unhappy? Oh, all right. Sorry. Yeah, I was I, happy I, to see these guys. They're my friends. We, I mean, well, because we, I think we had re- it was it was it was happening in there. Lunch rush, yeah. right? And I think maybe the issue was we just we had we had gotten a table for three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden. Five guys, uh, and I'm not talking about the restaurant. <laughs> I'm talking about the amount of guys at this table. 
But let me tell you, this was too many guys for this too size. Too many of this guys, because mm-hmm. we were all we're all big men. Sure. We're, we're very large men, big personalities, mm-hmm. yeah. big appetites, <laughs> huge cranks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, the cranks at this table. You, I mean, the cranks. Hodor looks like. Yeah, Hodor uh, <laughs> looks like I, I the deceptive up. eunuch <laughs> compared to these five Hodor men. looks like he has no dick. Yes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We're yeah. really packing some heat. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> five guys, five guys. <laughs> So uh, uh, yeah no no yeah, yeah they they came they came at, it, it was it was a rush hour but luckily it worked out great it worked out great the table next to us vacated and then Rodolfo was very and accommodating and let him sit down there Maddie Smith was saying to me that I was being too nice to Norms after I bit into a rot he said you're being too nice you bit into raw chicken I think that I think that's maybe fair because you know they fixed it the new tenders they brought were actually great they were piping hot they were cooked all the way through sure. they, they had a mm-hmm. great Christmas to them the the meat was was flavorful I thought that replacement was was great but yes I. I mean that could have made you sick. That could have made us all sick. I was sick afterwards for the rest of the night on a, but I had a headache. So right. who knows? Uh, probably not related. Anyways, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, because like, afterwards you went right to that Slurpee drinking contest, right? I, I did. <laughs> it was about speed, right? Anyway, I understand I there are some people though who are like, oh, you you possibly you made me sick, or you possibly made me sick. That is like unforgivable, and mm. that's just like their red line. And I think that's fine for a place that serves you food because that's that's irresponsible. It was it was the one stain on this meal. That's why and, I was being nice honestly, to it the because one I was trying on to this, like it. This app platter, even yeah. yes, absolutely. Um, we also got a uh, th- uh, a hot cakes with blueberry topping, um, which uh, come which uh, come with a the, uh, some whipped cream, and we shared those. And uh, I thought those hotcakes were great. I thought they were fantastic pancakes. Yeah, Norm's does a great pancake. Uh, I think pancakes is maybe, when we're talking about sober up foods, it's mm-hmm. my absolute favorite thing. Right. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, pancakes uh, uh, yeah, are awesome. And I think Norm's really, really does a great job. I think you're getting a, you're getting a better pancake than you are at a NIHOP or a Denny's. It's I mean, a, I know they're kind of hard to fuck up, but yeah. they are very good. They do it very well, that blueberry topping. But I had an issue. Yeah, I did what, have an issue. what was it? It was that the topping was cold. It, it was a uh, like the, the pancake itself was kind of cold. Sure, mm. and and I loved. I t- to be clear, I thought the pancakes were delicious, and I liked them quite a bit. But that topping but was cooling it off. We wanted t- hot cakes, not lukewarm cakes. Yes, exactly. Not yep. room temp cakes. Not room temp. We wanted hot pancakes. They hot could cakes. have warmed up them blueberries a little yeah. bit and then just put the whipped cream over on the side. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that might have worked a little bit better. I, it didn't really bother me. I thought they were they they were hot enough, and they, you know, like I thought they that the, mm-hmm. the, the the topping was very very flavorful and like like Jordan was saying, just a very well executed classic pancake. Um, and huge too. You had three full like just giant pancakes. Oh, yeah. we didn't so, even finish them. I believe. Yeah, we didn't yeah. finish sure. them, and we were sharing them. Amongst uh, five, uh, as we mentioned previously, big men with sure. big hogs to feed. <laughs> Gee, wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> one, for that me, you, one for you. One for you. You were putting your fork with food on it under the table. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you feed your penis, right, bitch? <laughs> um, and then we, uh, I go. We'll, we'll get into our individual meals. So mm. I got myself uh, the. I started off with a with a mixed green salad with blue cheese dressing. Did anyone else get a salad? Or I did. Came with my meal too. Yeah, came with yours, so, and you uh, also got a soup. Yeah. So yeah, I. Uh, uh, so yeah, my meal. Uh, I got the chicken fried steak platter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Came with a, a veggie, a potato. Uh, I'm like, oh, I'm going to pick salad. It comes with salad and soup. So I I was not expecting uh, this soup to come my way. Not a big soup guy. Occasionally, but uh, not my fave. Definitely, I don't order a lot of soups. Uh, But yeah, on a whim, I just kind of asked for the gumbo. I think my choices were gumbo and navy bean. Gumbo, pretty good. That was a good gumbo. A little spice, a little chicken, a little sausage, uh, and boom. I'm right back on the bayou. (laughs) I'm on my fan boat. I'm plucking my banjo. Right back on the bayou, <laughs> a place I have never been. <laughs> I, I, you tricked me. I figured that you had to live down I've there. Been, yeah, sure. I know with the authenticity, <laughs> yeah. with which I was speaking about the bayou. Right. You're like, oh, how else could you know those details? Sure. <laughs> um, Mitch, I, I can't remember. Did yours come with a soup? Mine did not come with a soup. Oh, that's right, you soupless bitch. <laughs> what the yeah. Fuck? Oh, no soup, bitch over here. Oh. I'm a soupless Mitch, not a soupless bitch. <laughs> Did you you had a soup? I didn't have a soup. Oh, yeah, well, you're a soupless bitch. I had some of Jordan's soup. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like I'm the only bitch with some soup around here. <laughs> nice try. Yeah. Trying to call me a soupless bitch when you were a soupless bitch? <laughs> <laughs> fucked up big time. 
Look, uh, let's just agree that you are one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, you got you had a salad. I had though, a salad with, with ranch dressing. I got mine with blue cheese dressing. What was your dressing again? Uh, oil and vinegar. Right. So we all different. Here's different dressings. my issue yes. with the salads. Sure. Toss some fucking cheese. I'll just make it a diner salad and toss cheese on it. It could have used a little. You think something. it should add some shredded cheese? On yeah, there. yeah. It was That's pretty all. much I mean, just some uh, some iceberg and shredded carrots. Yeah, and a little Pe- cabbage in there. Just those bag degrees. People would be like, Mitch, you're not supposed to put cheese on a salad. I get that. I'm just saying for what the diner salad sure. was. Yeah, it could have just used some cheese. You could or, wake it up a little bit. I thought know. that the actual the blue cheese dressing I got had some nice, you know, mm. the, some nice chunks in there. I thought that was a good dressing, but the actual salad is unexciting. The, the thing I'll say in its favor is that the greens weren't wet. Sometimes you get these diner salads at these places, and they they've got you know the the plate's a little wet or the yeah. greens a little wet, and then the yeah. oil in the dressing doesn't mix with the water. So I ordered they, a salad, not a drink. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What is a drink? <laughs> so it gets a little soupy, sure, a little drink like, if you will. Yeah. Um. So uh. So yeah, this did not have that effect. Uh, that that issue. Uh, and then uh, your chicken fried steak. Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah. So chicken fried steak uh, came with uh, came with soup salad, uh, veggie of the day. Uh, the the picture of the chicken fried steak uh, had some nice crisp looking green beans. Uh, sorry, I had a little belch and I tried to swallow it and I think I uh, made a face like I was doing kegels. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, I apologize. <laughs> Only we saw it. Yeah. Well, and I have described it. So <laughs> hopefully people are thinking about it. What do you think I look like, audience? <laughs> Don't cheat. <laughs> Hit me up on Twitter and tell me what you think I look like. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I got uh, so green beans on the menu. I know kind of the diner the diner thing is you know just kind of they whatever that veggie of the day is. You right. Get. I got a little dish of creamed corn uh, and then mashed potatoes, chicken fried steak, uh, and I wrote. I've I only made two notes. I looked at my notes uh, on the way over here. Uh, creamed corn wasn't good, and then in all caps, two gravies. Mm. So here's 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 my favorite part of the yeah. Meal. Usually, when you're getting something that has mashed potatoes and you get a protein that has a gravy, you kind of just get this gravy sloshed over the top. Right. And it's, the, it's a, such a dominant flavor. It's kind of just the flavor of the meal. Yeah. So, you, you know, you're getting, you know, your side and your main all kind of start to taste like gravy, which is delicious. Yeah. But, you know, you got two things. Make it taste like two things. Yeah. On my chicken fried steak, there was a cream gravy. On the potatoes... There was a brown gravy. Wow. Mm. I had two gravies. That's fantastic. I was, and I, I was just like, hey, you know, there's been some hiccups, but I'm here with five huge men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating two different gravies. Right. I'm having such a great day. Yeah. I don't know. It was really great. And I, it was the highlight of the meal for me was when I, I just realized I'm eating two gravies. Maybe I haven't had a great year, but this is pretty good. I'm having two gravies with some of my favorite dudes. Yeah, I, I, you know, that, that's why I was trying to overlook the incident. Sure, right, which was tough, and it's hard to get over it. Uh, Wire, didn't you offer the waiter to cream Jordan's corn for him? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> like, yeah, like I, in that situation, he's not offering me. He's addressing the waiter. the waiter. Hey. Like it'll be a surprise for him. Uh, it's like, hey, it's our friend's birthday. Do you guys do a song or something? <laughs> I get ex- like excuse myself like I'm going to the bathroom, but then I wink at the rest of my party. They know what I'm up to. I'm going to go jack off in some corn. I'll be right back. <laughs> and it's not like a prank. It's like a nice thing to do for my friend. That's, yeah. that's what you're that's saying. Yeah, that's what you think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Creamy enough. <laughs> okay. Um. Mitch, we and got... Jordan, I had a bite of your 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 chicken fried steak. Oh I, yeah, I, I, I will say it was very good. I, I, I'm remembering, yeah, I did too. Sure. It, was, it was actually. Quite and I don't good. usually love chicken fried. Chicken steak fried steak I don't usually. Lo- I'm not like it's not my favorite thing. And I, oh and boy, I, I love it. it. Um, Nick, we should talk about ours together. We got two different sandwiches. Yep, and we I, split it up. Yeah, like I friends. ordered. We did. It was mm-hmm. actually great. We split very everything, cute. and and you know what was nice. Every, it was it was set up in a way where it was very easy to share. Like mm-hmm. like my sandwich came in four pieces, your sandwich came in two pieces, and we I just handed you two wedges, you handed me one uh, one half, mm-hmm. and it worked out great. Um, uh, I got the clubhouse. This is a a traditional tr- triple decker uh, toasted white bread with uh, uh, turkey breast, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Um, you know the clubhouse style of having the the three breads, which I which I like. It's a fun change mm-hmm. of pace. Um, and then the Norm's original patty melt, which they write on the menu copy. Norm himself invented this popular sandwich, which is a bold claim. 
uh, and I'm not sure if it's if it's 100 true. But I it, don't know if I believe it myself. Yeah, but it's it's uh it's a ground chuck patty and grilled rye with melted American cheese and onions. But on here's request. what I will say about yeah. it. It was delicious. It's a dynamite patty melt. I'd say that's like the mm. best bite I had of that whole meal. It's fucking. It was great. really, really good. It's a good. great. It great was good. Patty melt. Just, just. They just did the run. beef really, really well. It was nice and thick enough and juicy. Juicy, yeah. Uh, they just. Did, it was good. Cooked it was good. Temp. It was undeniably good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've had the patty melt, but I've definitely had their burgers before. And every time I have one, I'm like, wow, this is like a significantly tick better than. I thought it was going to be. Anyway, Absolutely. it's a pretty killer burger. It's a place where people will go for breakfast, but Norm's has some lunch options and some dinner options that are that are pretty solid, and this patty melt is great. And I, I will also say that, you know, as opposed to the bun on the burgers, uh, this the this grilled rye bread is mm-hmm. just like, the, w- at least the execution we got, it was just like the right level of, of crispness to it, um, very well toasted, and, and just like it, it worked really well in terms of not overwhelming the beef with uh, with bunly goodness. Uh, and then the, the onions I thought were great. The the, the 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 little bit of sauce on it I thought was was great. Yeah, it was just a fantastic patty melt. The, 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 the stacker sandwich, whatever it's called. The clubhouse. The, club, the clubhouse. Not as impressive, just kind of less spectacular. A little, yeah. a little bit boring. I, 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 you know what? I know. I, I think this will probably annoy some people, but it could have used maybe a sauce or an avocado or something. There could have been some sort of something in there to kind of spice it up a little bit. Avocado would have gone a long way. I mean, I know that increases the price point, uh, but even if that was a menu option for a buck fifty, I would absolutely add some avocado because uh, mm-hmm. you know it. it yeah, it, it, it's you know it got it's a little. It's a little bready uh, because of that extra slice of bread, which again I like. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, and yeah, it, it probably was maybe a little. At least our version was a little didn't have as much condiments as it could have had. Yeah. Uh, but I thought the and the turkey I will say is a decent turkey. Yeah. Like it's like it's like a better than just like a store bought. You know, I mean I think yeah. it's store bought, but it's better than just like a like a an, a grocery store. You know, conventional ch- yeah, turkey. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Uh, but um. But yeah, also, like, not, it, not, not it, it needed some sort of because you know what the, the thing that made it not great to me is that the lettuce really stood out, which to me is sure. like, like, oh, I'm tasting too much lettuce in this yeah. sandwich. That's not right. Yeah, it was a little lettucey. Um, and then uh, you know, before we get to our final judgment, we have another thing to address, mm-hmm. which is uh, that that may be it for our food, but we also hit up the claw machine on the way out. That's right, mm, sure. And Nick, I got to give you credit. You almost got. You almost got away with a toy right there. You, I, you almost got a stuffed. What was it? Uh, I think it was a Patrick. It was I a SpongeBob's ver- friend Patrick. I came very close to nabbing Patrick. Yeah. Um, and I also I had a I got pretty close with Buttercup as well. I thought you were closer with Buttercup. Oh, uh, maybe Buttercup is what I'm thinking of. One of the two. I get I, I got close with one of the two of them, and uh, I basically had it in our grip. And and you know those things are fucking rigged, man. Just <laughs> like the say. elections in this country. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, I was also a clapping for myself there. Yeah. You. you you, 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 yeah. No one else clapped. <laughs> I will say it was really. I it was it was a very now listen. I know that you know you guys have a complicated relationship with yes. how you present on this show and how your fans view you, right? And you know, like I mean, I know that I've been doing a podcast, so sometimes right. you kind of become this. You know, to your fans, you become this weird version of yourself that right. maybe like you don't necessarily think is correct, or sure. you know, maybe the but. I will say it was a great Weiger moment when you, when we used our last claw credit, uh, and we didn't get one, and you just went, ah, "Well, that was a waste." <laughs> <laughs> it's how I felt. Sure, and I said we had fun doing this. Yeah. It was a fun time. We came away empty-handed. You went after a Powerpuff Girl first. <laughs> she would have been easy to grab. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus oh, Christ! Wait, hold on. <laughs> In the context of the claw sure. machine. Sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, head, the claw can grab the head. The head's oversized. <laughs> it's not a thing. You were very close. You were close to get... We, I feel like we all got kind of... For a claw machine, it did a good job because it made... More so than other claw machines where I'm like, the claw didn't even close. It just yeah. like kind of loosely went over the thing. This one, like it would, it brought the toy up top and then like like would drop it before it got there. It did a good job. I'm yeah, saying it was sure. a good... Yeah. It, was, it was a good... It was suspenseful. It was, oh, good, yeah, drama. suspenseful. A good con. Well, you know what? It was a Norm's branded claw machine. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. They got that Norm Jesus. signage all over the place. But I think if you would have gotten that Powerpuff Girl, she would have been a little undercooked. <laughs> <laughs> a little raw in the middle. It's hot on the outside, but a little bit of, a little bit of raw in the middle. <laughs> well, let's get to our final thoughts on Norm's. Mm-hmm. Jordan, you're a vet of the podcast, but just a refresher. We'll each go around. We'll 
give our closing statement, if you will, and then ascribe it a score on the order of zero to five forks. You're our guest. We will begin with you. Uh, yeah, so I think this trip to norms uh, was was a roller coaster. I mean, it mm. was really, I have very complicated feelings about the whole meal, and I think it's fitting because I kind of have complicated feelings about the chain in general. Um, yeah, like I said, it kind of represents a time in my life when I was when I was partying, when I did need to sober up, when I mm-hmm. did, you know, you know, have to, you know, when I was drunk on a weeknight and needed to get home from work, and right. you know, and part of me thinks, hey, that was a really fun time, but then also part of me thinks, is why were you doing that? That was very bad. Um, so yeah, and I think that kind of mirrors the kind of you know complicated meal we have stuff was a little undercooked there was a couple of temperature issues right but there's also some really really delicious food mm-hmm. um so yeah i i think you know and obviously i have a i i'm i'm invested in this chain i'm kind of realizing as i'm talking about it like financially financially yes i have a stake in it maybe this is maybe i should have divulged that yeah. before we started it's a little bit of a conflict uh, but, of interest. Um, i am norm <laughs> okay my right. middle name is jordan i go by that wow I'm norm morris i invented the patty melt um i'm not i'm not norm morris norm morris i'm not norm morris jordan morris is so much more of an interesting fun man to me right. norm morris is immediately like a less interesting person that's a different guy right yeah, yeah he's a he's yeah he's a man who golfs yeah, norm morris golfs he never left orange county he sure didn't <laughs> yeah um so yeah i but but i i in general i just think that this is a great execution of diner food yeah I think it always has been it is a you know it fills the same need as a denny's or an ihop both mm-hmm. of which i love but i think it's always a tick better than those uh something we didn't mention but there was just a great vibe in there it's always been a kind of a family yes. place and even though that you know uh, that area of town that the original Norms is in has gotten pretty tony and... It's gentrified quite a bit. Yeah, gentrified quite a bit. It still is a neighborhood place with all kinds of people. Uh, you know, we sat next to some cool dudes, but uh, there was also some families there, older people. A high school basketball team came in. You'll see a guy uh, with a hard Nick, you loved. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think that, yeah, it, it definitely is a is a, is a neighborhood spot in the middle of LA where neighborhood spots are becoming fewer and far between her. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that is an important thing that norms does. Right. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I really think it would be cool to give norms five forks. Cause I think it's that good. Wow. But I, I, but you can't ignore the undercooked food. It's a it's a serious whiff. Right. Uh, some temperature issues. You know, hot cakes should be piping hot. Uh, that being said, that you know, I I I am very forgiving toward norms. I I genuinely love it. Uh, you know, complicated feelings aside, uh, would love to give it five. Don't think I can do it. Four forks. Four forks. Very good score. Um, Mitch, I'll, I'll give my rating now, and then I want to okay. I want you to close yeah. it out because uh, you were the one most affected by that chicken tendy, and I want to see how how it affected your score. Um, also, oh. it, Wally was getting his head wrapped around the wire, and it was about to unplug the. And, oh. <laughs> Wally He's now chewing on the wire. Uh, what did he unplug something that we need for the record? No, no, no that's fine. I could okay, it. we're still rolling. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Uh, get your shit together, Wally. <laughs> You're gonna start yelling at my cats too. <laughs> no, I like Wally. He's a very handsome boy. He's very handsome. Do you like me? I like you too. We like each other. <laughs> everyone likes God. everyone. <laughs> uh, Wally so, likes Irma. Wally's up on the table now. It's very cute. I love it. I think I agree with a lot of the points Jordan is making. And just to just to clarify one thing, in case anyone you know who's unfamiliar with norms, uh, maybe was 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 unclear. This is a, a chain with multiple locations, and you know we were describing the one. Uh, Jordan was describing the one location and the vibe in there, but I think that's a, that applies to a, 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 all the different norms, is at least the ones I've been to, and I've been to a number of them. Um, I used to frequent both the ones on P- on Pico, the one in Santa Monica, and the one in Estel, West LA, uh, quite a bit, and. Yeah, always like no, no matter what time of day you go, friendly service, a very nice vibe. Um, I always even felt like when there were drunk people in there, it was never like this is unruly and this was crazy. It was never like mm-hmm. that late night McDonald's or sometimes where it's like, oh, this is kind of a weird, uncomfortable place to be because people are just so fucked up. Uh, and uh, 
and I really like that about it. And also, too, I will say that the consistency of food across di the different chains is like you always feel I always feel like you know what you're going to get. The we never close ethos I really admire. And I, I, I like that they're they're just so committed that they, they just go all the way. Um, and it, it always feels like they have enough servers there, partly because they are, are always, you know, they tend to be pretty crowded. A lot, a lot of people eat there because it delivers something uh, that a lot of that you can't get a lot of places. Uh, another thing we haven't touched on, and I mm -hmm. think is relevant because especially contrasted with another place we went to in San Francisco, Mitch, uh, is the price point at, at Norm's is very good, especially for LA. It's like, it's not super expensive. It's like, it's got a lot of affordable stuff. It, it has like an early bird special. It has like a lunch special uh, during the weekdays. Uh, they have a lot of deals that make this place uh, not something that's going to, where it's going to break the bank. Um, and uh, yeah, I really like the food. They just do those diner classics really, really well. Uh, you know, the salad was the salad and, and the clubhouse were just ordinary, but the and and there was obviously the issue with the chicken tenders, but the the hotcakes and the patty melt were fantastic. The diner coffee was fantastic. I'm gonna go with Jordan. The service was fantastic, as I mentioned. I'm gonna go with Jordan. I think Norm's deserves four forks and belongs in the Golden Plate Club. I'm going to send it over mm. to Mike Mitchell, Mitchy Two Spoons. Oh boy! You can well, rec, you can rec shop, Mitch. I, I understand if you feel like you need to. Say what's you in your heart. Feel like you need to rec shop. I liked the I liked the at, I liked the atmosphere in there. I liked the attitude that uh, the staff had. I thought it was a fun place. I liked the signage. I li like like Bickford's. I like a place like Norm's. Right. It has a spot in my heart, even though I don't even. This is my first visit there. Um. Hmm. Here is the issue. Sure. It's hard to forgive that biting into the, the the undercooked chicken finger and i just wouldn't feel right i gotta i gotta give it another visit so i i almost feel incom I, I feel like my score is kind of more incomplete um i can't give it for, i i I, hey, I i honestly say what's in your heart in my in my mind i was gonna people be like want authenticity people be, need they need to they, they they don't need to feel like you're uh you know putting put, put cork in the bat yeah don't uh, cork the bat, Mitch. I'm, I, can't, I can't. I can't. I and you know what though? But remembering how good the patty melt was, it was good. The fries I thought were just okay. Nick sandwich. Oh, we didn't touch on the fries. Nick sandwich. Fries. Nick sandwich could have been better. The app platter outside of the chicken fingers were was fine, but the chicken fingers really kind of ruined that for me. I was gonna go. I was gonna say right below a three. I was gonna say two point nine, but that patty melt was very very good. Mm -hmm. The pancakes were very good. The service was good. The atmosphere was good. So I'm going to give it. Here's what I'm going to give it right now. It's an incomplete score, three point one five forks. Okay. I know that it's a good place, mm -hmm. but I can't, in good conscience, go into the Golden Plate Club yet. Yeah. After the first visit, there was was there was an, there was an accident like that. Right. I got gotcha. you. And I like I like the menu. I like that they offered kind of some crazy like weird lemonade. They had like a lot of like weird things that I didn't think they would have on this menu. Right. And like fun stuff that like. That IHOP tries, but it felt like less of a giant corporation, right? Um, and, and and it felt like more authentic food in some way. You know what I mean? Like it felt, it felt yeah. like more like that other stuff feels mass produced or something. I mean, I think both those things feel that feel that way because they're true. I think it is. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not a massive corporation. I think it is a little fresher. But, I'm, but this is it's almost an incomplete for me. I'm sorry. No, nope, that's very fair. I think that's mm -hmm. reasonable. I think you're a reasonable man. Yeah, Mitch, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I think I found that electro song. Did oh, you really? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Should I should I play it? Yeah, let's see if this electro electro song works. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, we, it, that was our review of Norms. It's time for a regular segment. We got a beverage. We're going to decide if you should pour it down your throat. It's drank or stank. I'm going to get this, these drinks ready to consume. It's called Paranoia. Ooh. Paranoia. Okay. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like these weird things that go through his head as he's about to attack Spider-Man. Right. I got a question for you, yeah. please. So you got you got you got you got a taste of it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen the movie. I saw it in theaters. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. How does he rank for you? Because Spider-Man was, I, I think Spider-Man was one of my fav favorites. Oh, sure, yeah. I would say he is my favorite comic book character. He yeah. definitely was as a kid, for oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. As Marvel heroes, or in general, I'm going to pour one for Rob, too. There you go, Rob, if you want it. No pressure. Don't feel like you have to drink that. Um, yeah, I, I, hmm. 
I was He's more up there of a, for me. I was more of an Iron Man guy. Oh wow! Yeah, I like Iron Man in the comics. I like. I did like the Avengers, though specifically the West Coast Avengers. Because oh, you like Wonder Man? And yeah, the Century. Yeah, I like the West Coast Avengers because um, it was West Coast. I like. Sure. I like that it was associated with the Western United yeah. States. Oh boy! <laughs> um, and uh, I, I, I get a lot of crap for like Boston Hulk. and Quincy. Guy. It, rightfully so. Yeah, but. I don't think I would be like, yeah, East Coast Avengers. I don't you would <laughs> love it. Yeah. You would lo- yeah. if there was Boston Avengers. You would eat that Hell shit. Yeah. You'd be saying to this very day how they were the it's best Avengers. Larry Bird, but he's covered in feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, love that. All right, so we've got these Starbucks refreshers. You picked these up for us, Mitch. Uh, this is a sparkling juice blend, real coconut water, real fruit juice. This first one is strawberry lemonade. I've, I, I filled up these blue solo cups for you guys. We can take a sip and let us know what we think. Let everyone know what we think. Yeah, so this has a huh, little okay. bit of an artificial tang, which I'm pretty sensitive to when it right. comes to soft drinks. Yeah. Anything that has a little NutraSweet or... It's a co- it's a coconut water, right? I guess so, yeah. Can you hear me the can, Jordan? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got a nice little carbonation uh, yeah. to it. Uh, yeah, you can, you know, the strawberry is there, the lemonade is there. Right. Um, yeah, if I'm getting artificial tang, it better be from a real doll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> sure. Um, oh wait, God. since this is Starbucks, is this supposed to have some sort of caffeinated kick to it? I don't think this is caffeinated. No, it's just a flavored juice yeah. blend drink from Concentrate. It is real coconut water, real fruit juice, okay. right. which is surprising to me because I it tasted artificial. You know what? 90 calories for a can of that size for the sweetness of this is better than I thought it it's would be. It's a pretty yeah. good-sized can. Not swap quite a monster swap energy. this out but. for a soda. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it doesn't have yeah it, it it's it's all natural but it has a lot of additives. Here's here's a, here's, a, here's what here's here. what I gotta say about it. I think it's the specifically the specifically the banana taste that leaves a little bit kind of like a medicine taste. Towards yeah, the it's end a of little it. medicine. You're absolutely right. Right, right. right towards the end of it. I'm gonna. Um, it I'm, gonna I'm gonna. You know what? Do you guys need a pour out cup? If you need to pour them out, you can go and. Oh yeah. Are one. we gonna refill the? We've got the a, we've flavor? got another one. Okay. I'm gonna actually just gonna finish mine off real quick. Okay. Uh, you I go. you know what? I don't mind this. I agree. It's a little mediciney. That's that's the main issue. But I like that it's just lightly carbonated. Like that actually really works for this flavor. It's very much the carb- The the medicine taste though is like I didn't even. It took like. Yeah. It took like a, like it's an twenty aftertaste. seconds. Like yeah. it took a, it took a, it took a while. Sneaks so. up on you. And then this other one we're we're passing around. And uh, you know, actually, can you can you read the label for for me, uh, uh, Rob? And, and let me know what what is this? Peach passion fruit. Peach passion fruit. Thank you so much. It's a little better. Uh, yeah, this definitely this definitely doesn't have the medicine y kick that the other I, one does. I like oh. this one quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Wally just got interested. I think this one. I, I what I like about it is the. Ooh, Wally's up on the table. It reminds me of. Does he? Does Does Wally like juice? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Can cats drink juice? I've never fed them juice, okay. which I'm sure people are happy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> just pouring them some ocean spray before you leave the house. You know, there's there's going to be like a Reddit thread now that's like, I think Mitch doesn't know how to feed his cats. <laughs> I think he's feeding them like people food. Sure. I feed my cats. I feed my cats fancy feast, mm. a seafood dry food. Mm. And then I feed them uh, whatever, like the nine lives, wet food is occasionally. Right. And I give them water. That's the other thing. My cats are weird in that they don't like. <laughs> I'll put out like milk, and, like yeah. I, like when they were younger, I'd be like, "It's your birthday," and I would put out milk. Sure. This is embarrassing because too. that's what cartoon cats love. That's what cartoon right. cartoon cats love. And my right. old cats loved milk. Oh yeah. And they would love butter, mm. and and they they would lick at butter if butter was around. I mean, we wouldn't be feeding them butter. Right. But um. But yeah, he, he they they like they like they drink they don't love milk they don't love human food that much they just yeah. don't they just don't care about my it. cat is really interested in strawberry tops oh. the little oh. leafy part of strawberries uh, which I guess this it's something I like to do is sit on the couch and eat strawberries mm. and I put the little you know I have a little bowl next to me for mm-hmm. the tops I turn my back cat's face is in there. Oh, are boy. they eating them oh, or are they playing with them? Or? I think she's. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I try not to let her have them because I mean, I think like anything on the internet, I googled can a cat eat a strawberry top, and the first result was no poison. Yeah, cat will die. Uh, so I try not to let her eat them. Right, which is know. which is crazy. I feel like I, the, 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 there's so few things that a cat would because they were not going to eat it if it's. It, I mean, like they normally wouldn't eat it. Right. Um, a funny thing, Nick, that you yeah. and I found out. The Undertaker, the wrestler, 
afraid of cucumbers, just like cats. Yeah, it's very really? strange. Yes. He's, How does that manifest itself? I, I I think that they like gross them out and make them sick, and mm. then uh, Paul Bearer used to put slices of cucumber in, like they he put a slice of cucumber in, in his iced tea, and then he like puked. Every, where where was it? it? Was like a like a restaurant. I don't remember specifically. The, but yeah. the, the 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 Paul Bearer snuck a piece of of cucumber into his iced tea. Yeah, yeah they, and he saw it, and he like it had a big thunderous puke. Right. All over the place because he like <laughs> because cucumbers cut, freak him out. That's Man. like the kind of that, that's like the uh, Maury. I feel like used to do like uh, this person's afraid of X, and, or, and they'd have some person on with some bizarre phobia. Oh yeah, then they would bring a person. Then they, he would have a stagehand come on with bubble wrap. Right, and you kind of watch this middle aged woman run around right. the stage. Yeah. I remember one time this this <laughs> watching this woman have a panic attack because of her related to her fear of mustard. Mm. <laughs> Just like how did that happen? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, I would say this this pe- this is a winner. This one I really like. The, I, I like passion fruit quite a bit. I like it in a juice. This is actually is we we you t- we were talking about sense memories earlier. Uh, this this gives me a sense memory of drinking some uh, passion fruit juice on a plane in Hawaii when I was a kid. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, when I, I my my trip to Hawaii when I was six that I kind of remember. My grandpa, who I mentioned earlier, uh, mm. who you guys said had a big rack, uh, crashed <laughs> crashed his rental car. Oh wow. no! Yeah, but he was fine. Sure. Yeah, but I bet uh, if he got pulled over, he could get out of that ticket. Huh? <laughs> Flash uh, those. S- sorry about that, officer. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you can do to make this go faster? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Drop my license. <laughs> Better pick it up. Um. Yeah, I you know this is this is a mild stank to me. It's not it's not unpleasant, uh, but yeah, just you know a little mediciney. I right. think I would you know if you're kind of like going betwixt soda and seltzer, this is mm-hmm. more unpleasant than a seltzer to me. But you know, it doesn't have the delicious kick of a full cal soda. Right? So, yeah, I, I I and 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 also, I mean, maybe if this was a you know substitute for a monster or a rock star or a you know cup of coffee or something i could see some benefits maybe it's a fun way to get a little pep but uh yeah as far as if it's if it's just kind of a pepless treat uh yeah mild stank for yeah me. Mild i think that's stank. fair i'm gonna give a mild drink to both of them yeah i think they're they, they taste just good enough the medicine aftertaste on that one is not good yeah but they're both just good enough that i would drink a can of that and be like eh, even though it doesn't really do too much for you i guess it's probably right. what 30 or 40 calories less than a can of Coke, right? Yeah, it's the kind of... Probably less sugar, let's see. Right, it's the kind of thing of like, is this going to Mm. satiate your desire to have something sweet? And if not... 22 grams of carbs. Right. So this this is... And then 20 grams of sugar. This isn't like healthy. (laughs) Yeah. This is is just... It's a little better than, Mm. than, you know, like a can of Pepsi or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I would say... I'm just going to go with an ink. Because I think this is exactly between drink mm, and sure. stank. I liked one of them. I didn't like the other one. You know, there, there's no real reason I'd get this, but I also don't object to it either. Um, and maybe it, it'll be fine for some people. But yeah, n- nothing, nothing particularly exciting about these. Um, hey, Weiger, you were yeah. you were in Hawaii right around? Uh, oh wait, Joe versus the volcano doesn't take place in Hawaii, does it? I don't know. I don't think yeah, so. I, I think it's know. a different. I think it's a different island. It's a different island. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, now. what joke are you going to make? No, I was just I was just saying it would be an exciting time to be in Hawaii if Joe versus the <laughs> volcano came out. They yeah. might have filmed it there. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Mm. Uh, I do remember seeing that movie in theaters with my parents and having a great time. That sounds fun. Yeah. And yeah. afterwards, I said, uh, it, "It's Meg Ryan's in that movie, right?" Mm-hmm. I said, "Meg Ryan should be nominated for an Oscar." Mm. And they're like, "You dumb little kid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what." Uh, so when what something good is, uh, <laughs> hey, that was Tank, Tank or Stank, just like a restaurant. We value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback, and we have a voicemail today. Let's listen Ooh. to this. Hey, Doe boys, this is Max from St. Louis. I'm having a bachelor party for my friend this weekend. Another fellow Doe boys listener. I was wondering what kind of food you like at bachelor parties. Have fun. Bye bye. Wondering what food that was, uh, Max from St. Louis, as he said, wondering what kind of food we like at bachelor parties. Uh, Jordan, have you, 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 you strike me as someone who's attended some bachelor parties in your day. Uh, boy, uh, yes, I have attended some bachelor parties. And, you know, I think that if you're making a weekend out of it, right. uh, do, a, do a steakhouse. Get oh, the, yeah. Get the, get the gang together. Everybody put on their best coats, ties. Right. Uh, whatever you consider to be your best. Uh, throw it on, go to a steakhouse, go big, apps, sides, 
uh, drinks, of course. Yes. Um, but yeah, but if also, you know, just like if it's a kind of a weekend thing where you gotta, you know, you're, you're, uh, chilling around a vacation home or something, uh, you know, just party, fun party food, right. finger foods. Yeah. So maybe one big, nice meal and then, uh, and then just kind of unhealthy snacking. That's my vote, I think. Mitch, anything? That's a great answer. Mitch, anything for bachelor party fair? Bachelor, bachelor, bachelor party fair. So. Yeah. What kind in, of food in would Vegas you want there? specifically? I think just in general. Hmm. I think that it's always. I, I agree with Jordan. I mean, I'm thinking of ones that I, a lot of the ones I go to are in Las Vegas, right? Uh, be just because of proximity and uh, and it's Sin City mm-hmm. and Sin City, which I don't like. Sinning is bad. I agree. Yeah, you're right, Mitch. <laughs> I I agree. Um, I'm not gonna here to tell you sinning is good. It's bad. It's bad. Um, I think I think sometimes, yeah, you get a, a nice steak dinner would be nice. I'd like I'm thinking of when we went to Vegas, we would we would go, we went to like one nice steakhouse like Cut or something like that. Right. Yeah. They all sound similar. It's like Cut or sure. steak or raw or whatever the, the. fuck it is. The <laughs> yeah, just the <laughs> just the we're gonna go big at the. <laughs> um, and then you know we went to the Taco Bell canteen. I think that that's always the more fun stuff is is kind of like the shittier food when you're right. Because you're out with your friends, you're partying. Yeah, wings, you want to end up. You want to end up at a norms, maybe. Sure. Or something. You want you want to have fun with some. Get pizza. that last little bit of diarrhea before you get married. You know, <laughs> one last one last ride. You don't get it once you're married. Oh you're, man, that's true. <laughs> man, I, I would kill to have some diarrhea. <laughs> you're so, you're so regular. <laughs> now. Going on eight years with no diarrhea. Totally regular, huh? Boy, <laughs> you know it's worth it though. It's not, worth it. Not me and Mitch. <laughs> Couple of bachelors <laughs> with every, the squirts every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, my answer would be, you know, to uh, as far as bachelor party food is to do what I did with my bachelor party and not have one. Ha- yeah, don't have any. Don't, <laughs> don't bother with that. Sure, who cares? Uh, but you know, so I what, hope would you, what would your bachelor party meal be? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it, and I wouldn't do it. That's this seems like not only a fun thing to do, but mm-hmm. maybe a pitch for a mid budget comedy. A c- c- b- couple of buddies. Yeah. Huge hogs. Uh, <laughs> they got a friend who's, you know, who's, who's maybe not not what you would consider to be a party animal. Mm-hmm. Eloped, and you're throwing him a late in life bachelor oh, party. Oh, a late in life bachelor or, uh, party. You know, That's sure, the, the bachelor like party he never had. Right, exactly. Or that could also be an old guy comedy. Oh, like that. Yeah, that feels like that's sure, a sure, that's sure. a thing of like the old guy. Maybe his you know his wife passed away. <laughs> sure. And he's yeah, definitely wouldn't re- want to add a dead wife into yeah, this. <laughs> he's getting he's well because for some emotional residence oh, in sure, the third yeah. act. No, you're right. Um, but he's getting remarried. Yeah. And now it's like this guy. We're gonna have an old guy bachelor party. I'm doing the Dougie. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want? <laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Is this vaping? <laughs> <laughs> Am I juuling? <laughs> Look, it's Chappie. Wait, what is, <laughs> what is this movie? Come along, Chappie. This was written when they really thought Chappie was going to take off. <laughs> Uh, if you have a question or comment about the world of like Chamber, there's all those Battleborn characters right. in Ready Player One. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clever remark. Anyway, <laughs> you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 830 go Doe. That's 830 463 6844. To get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden Plate Club at patreon.com slash Doughboys. Jordan Morris, you're one of the funniest people on earth. Uh, yes. I, hope people, I hope people check out Bubble. Tell us about Bubble real quick, which, which our, oh, our sure. buddy Mitch is in. Yes. Yeah, well, this is, uh, you know, there's there's there, the Doughboys family. Fingerprints is are all over this thing. Uh, Literally, yes. They're, they're, <laughs> you both have very greasy hands. And, uh, so yeah, this is a scripted comedy podcast uh, that I'm doing with MaximumFun.org uh, with the great writer uh, Nick Adams, uh, who is a writer for BoJack Horseman uh, and a bunch of other cool people. We wrote eight episodes of this kind of weird sci-fi comedy. It's a um, it's like there's a kind of a Portlandish hipster city that is under a literal bubble, hence the name Bubble, no the. And uh, but there's uh, monsters on the outside; they start to get in. Uh, so yeah, I think if you're into if you're into stuff like Buffy or Portlandia or stuff that's maybe a little action and a little comedy, uh, you'll enjoy this. Uh, one of the leads, this, uh, one Mike Mitchell, who is really really funny in it, and uh, got a bunch of other cool people: uh, Allison Becker, Cristela Alonzo, Keith Powell from Thirty Rock, and uh, some some doughboys faves that I think people will recognize. John Hodgman, mm. uh, current insane drifter, <laughs> uh, does a little voice in it. Uh, Vanessa Ramos, Rob Hubel. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a kind of a cool, weird thing that we're trying. I don't know if people 
will take to narrative in their podcasts, but uh, I hope they do. It's called Bubble, and it comes out June 13th. It was awesome. It was a pleasure to be a part of yeah, something. Yeah, you Jordan are really created. funny. No, Nick. Jordan. It, and we owe Jordan just for everything with our podcast. He's, he's, he, he knew so much, so much about that getting into it. It's a, one of our favorite guests there. One of the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the and, uh, and more, uh, more credit where credit is due. Uh, a certain Nick Weiger came in and did punch up on the thing. And I think, uh, uh, I think maybe you can attest to this, Mitch. Like, it is very obvious when a Weiger joke comes up in this, That's in a sure. really good way. It's sure. like you're uh, you you are a distinct man with a great right. sense of humor, and it is uh, it is definitely uh, all over this thing, smattered throughout. Because I think you uh, were there for punch up on all the scripts. So uh, so yeah, definitely uh, if you're a Doughboys fan, uh, something something for you in there. Uh, Look bubble. out for a scene where the mischievous uh, Bob, Kevin, and Stewart wander in, <laughs> oh, searching God. out some bananas. Yeah, we, we might actually that might have been a legal problem. We may have. <laughs> Oh, cut really? That. Yeah, I guess we can't have licensed characters oh, in it. Oh, fuck. But, yeah. All right. So we had to change their names to <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Pedro, and uh, <laughs> Tina, the first female minion. It's about time. <laughs> Yeah, there is there. Are there no female minions? There are no female minions. I actually thought that the the explanation for that was, you know, whatever. That it's it's okay. It's okay to, to think that that's that's not cool, and certainly that there there's an issue with uh, the with uh, women being underrepresented to this day. But I think I thought the explanation from it from the director Pierre Coffin was kind of that like men are just uh, like boys are just <laughs> more buffoonish. And did you get scared by Pierre Coffin? Coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, French people. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but he was just talking about like like boys are inherently more buffoonish. Women, sure. like girls, are too smart for, to to seem this like silly. It would not come ac- the the slapstick would not come across the same way. Uh, which- I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but yeah, remind us one more time where people can check out Bubble. Uh, Bubble. That's wherever you get podcasts or at maximumfun.org. Uh, yeah, just search for it and wherever you're using to listen to this, and it'll pop up. And I hope you enjoy it. All right. Hey, Jordan, sorry you got one of our combat combatants. No, I like it. No, it was fun. Yeah. We had fun. It was a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> a delightful roller coaster with two of the funniest guys in the world. I got to go back to Norm's. Yeah. Back, we're, we're, I got to go yeah, back. Yeah, let me know. If you ever want to, I will go back with you anytime. A drunken night at Norm's. If you want to get get a couple of drinks. Oh, man, that'd be great. I would love to go to mm-hmm. Norm's and, and I'll finally, hear what you think. I'll finally cream that corn for you. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your hands off my corn, you fucking pervert. <laughs> See ya. Hey guys, you want more Doughboys? To get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, join the Golden Plate Club. Sign up at patreon.com slash doughboys. Do it. That was a HeadGum Podcast.